Brian joins us with our business news this morning. Brian. Thank you, Brian. We'll be hearing later in the programme from the Chief Executive of the DAA about that decision by the Commission for Aviation Regulation to cut passenger charges at Dublin Airport. Owen Corrie, editor of Travel Extra, is here now. An average 11% reduction over the next uh, five years, Owen. Will passengers benefit here? Will, will these reductions be passed on in the form of lower airfares? Uh, very, very likely. The, the scenario here is that Dublin Airports have put in um, their plans for capital expenditure. The they need to, they've put in this is how much it's going to cost they're looking for uh, a level of spending which is more than a euro more than what the commissioner has allowed all uh, on the other side uh, in the other ring uh, in the uh, in the other corner of the ring we have the airlines iata everyone's saying there's they're overstating or that they're not tackling other costs that could be cut things like legacy staff do they need to operate the spare runway after the new north runway is built so that debate has been going on for a little while 37 submissions went into the commissioner she came out this morning saying effectively 7 euro 50 is what the passenger charge will be that's really good news for passengers because uh, unlike in the past there is a track record of airlines passing this on to passengers particularly the dominant air line in uh, Dublin which is Reiner. So will the charges now be 60% less than the European average as the DA are claiming? Uh, this is a, uh, the, uh, the great statistical morass that we're facing this morning. Uh, who are you benchmarking yourself against? Your, Europe is some of the most expensive airports in the world. If you're benchmarking yourself against uh, Division 1 airports like Heathrow, Charles de Gaulle, Frankfurt, where Dublin has pushed itself into because of the success of our transatlantic services, uh, they are considerably cheaper. The way the airlines would argue is um, this is not cheaper than the European the uh, group of lower cost air airlines which they would benchmark Dublin against and they are like Willie Walsh uh, would be very very clear that um, he, the Dublin airport charges are already a little bit high and that uh, we've Christoph Muller the former CEO of Aer Lingus co- accused you know airports of building marble halls and expecting uh, passengers to pay for them in under the old system airports just decided to spend charged what they're like Michael O'Leary of course doesn't want an airport at all he told me once all you need is a gap in the fence and a security man and bring them straight in from the car park but it's getting busier all the time they're trying to develop it so they they need the money to to develop the infrastructure (coughs) new aircraft stands new piers all of those sort of things are in the plan Um, (coughs) one of the arguments is uh, is 40 million are they overstating the amount of growth that's going to happen in two million in five years to 40 million passengers and do they need for instance the number of uh, aircraft stands that's been questioned seriously by Reiner. What uh, the Commissioner has done is seems to have taken uh, a line which is closer to what the airport, the, air, uh, the airlines want and less to what the airport wants. Let's look further afield. Boeing, the 737 MAX has been out of the skies for over half a year now. A number of airlines, including Ryanair, are wa- waiting uh, delivery of aircraft. When are they going to get them? When yeah, Michael O'Leary uh, publicly saying uh, to Boeing, get your act together and he, d- he did not use the word act. What their uh, Ryan, what Norwegian did yesterday was push the ex- expectation date out to March. I see Southwest have it in February. It's quite clear from Ryanair's growth plans uh, of uh, which are ver- basically holding flat or one or two percent growth. They, they do not expect uh, delivery of a significant number of aircraft next summer. This one is because uh, the confidence has been broken between the regulators in Europe and in uh, America. The actual getting it back into the sky will be followed by a serious regulation regulatory debate and it could be quite a time any of the air airlines I'm looking at that are operating max and expecting them are pushing that deadline further and further back. Could it not just uh, simply cancel the orders and go to Airbus? Um, Airbus are full for about five years and the Airbus aircraft that are coming onto the market, Norwegian li- uh, released a few yesterday, tend to be the older ones. When Thomas Cook went down a lot of aircraft on the market, they're <laughs> so old they need Zimmer frames. There's, they're quite a few, they're, they're old, uh, old elderly aircraft. But while they will fill the stop gaps along the way, it's it's a big deal for a Boeing air, airline to shift to Airbus for maintenance, retraining of pilots, all of those sort of things. Owen Corey, editor of Travel Extra, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Brian. More later on those uh, uh, passenger uh, charges, uh, the cut to passenger charges from the Commission for Aviation Regulation. For the moment, back to Gavin.